We also need a timer. Hello, uh, I am Pastor Carlos King and I am Georgine Gaddy with Covenant of Peace Church in Union City, Indiana, 900 West Hickory Street. We would like to invite you today to County Miracles. We are live from the studio and we are so excited to share our faith with you. We are believing that miracles are still happening today. And so that's the emphasis of this show is counting miracles with you and believing God that he is going to continue to do greater things with each passing day, amen? Well, Pastor King is going to be speaking today about a very notable miracle uh, from William Brantum. And tune in next week and we will have Dr. Rothwell, uh, Raymond Rothwell, and he will be also speaking on a famous uh, Brantum miracle. And so we just want to share with you today and encourage your faith. And I am so looking forward to hearing what Pastor King has to say about things that have taken place in our lifetime. Amen? Amen. Well, uh, I'm actually from the part of uh, Indiana where Brandon was from. I'm from Southern Indiana and uh, actually had family members that attended Brandon's church. Uh, and Branham was one of the earliest of the uh, faith healers. Uh, most Pentecostal charismatic uh, scholars consider him kind of like the founder of the whole restoration movement. Wow. And by restoration, they mean restoring miracles and healing and divine healing and those things to the church. Uh, <clears throat> Branham had a church down there and still has churches down there today. The miracle that I'm going to talk about, I was visiting one of my uh, college fellowship members. You know, we talked earlier about the college fellowship that I had for six years. Yes. And one of our members had moved to uh, rural southern Ohio. And he lived in a house, uh, rented a room from uh, a homeowner there. And we went up to visit him one time to visit the former member. And uh, I had a long conversation with this uh, homeowner who was also a, a spirit-filled believer. And he told me this story. Uh, so this is from the horse's mouth. This is from the father of the child in this story. Uh, he was not a believer at the time and uh, he and his wife had one child, little boy, and this boy had stomach cancer. Now we're talking about the uh, 50s or 60s early 60s or 50s and the stomach cancer was inoperable and the doctors gave the family no hope the little boy's stomach was just swollen with the tumors the father said so he and his wife uh they had drove to uh, a brand meeting and they got a motel room and they were going to go to the meeting that night well the little boy was so sick and in so much pain that the wife decided she needed to stay in the room uh, with the little boy, the motel room. And so she sent her mm -hmm. lost, unbelieving husband to the Brandon meeting. And she Praise said, God. whatever you do, get in the healing line. So, you know, the, the uh, man just followed his wife's instructions. He went to the meeting. Now, he told me I did not fill out any slips of paper saying anything about my son or his condition. I did not tell anybody, you know, I was just in the meeting. And when uh, the time came to go forward into the healing line, he went forward into the line. And he said that uh, Brandon was going down the line, laying hands on people and praying for various people. And when he came to him, he said, uh, Brandon looked at him for a moment. And then he said, you and your wife take a string and, uh, pray over that string and tie it around your boy's stomach. And he said, in the morning, he'll be well. And he went on to the next person. So he went back to the hotel room. He told his wife, he said, uh, you know, the man said to get a string, that we're to pray over the string, tie it around our boy's stomach, and in the morning, he'll be well. So uh, the wife, as most women, she said, well, I have string in my purse. <laughs> So uh, she had happened to have some string in her purse. We carry everything in our purse. <laughs> so they took the string out. They tied it around the boy's stomach. Well, they prayed over it first. They tied it around the uh, boy's stomach. 
And now remember, I'm not hearing this secondhand. I'm not hearing this uh, as a story. I'm hearing it from the father of the child. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, we pray, we tied it around our son's stomach. Amazing. He said, uh, early in the morning, he began to uh, regurgitate. He began to vomit up those tumors, oh uh, tumor after tumor. And he said, when he was done, his stomach was flat. When they went to back to the doctors and he was examined again, he was pronounced uh, cancer free. It's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So uh, you know, Branham. Uh, there are countless stories of miracles like that. My family had uh, many different interactions with Branham over the years, and there are uh, countless stories of the miracles that he performed. But we want to give you a scriptural foundation. Amen. Also, so. If you have a Bible, you can turn with me to uh, Matthew 9, uh, verse 27. And I want to read this passage of Scripture to you and just talk to you a minute about it. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. Now, one of the things I, that I want to, to talk to you about today for a few minutes is this point of where Jesus asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? You know, very often when Jesus encounters someone who's sick, you, uh, you'll see that he's uh, asked them to consider their faith. You know, right. Jesus told them, according to your faith, let it be done to you. So we have many people, they go to churches for healing, and uh, they really don't have the faith. You know, right. they haven't built their faith. They haven't, uh, they're not praying Maybe uh, not even praying before the service. Absolutely, they're not. Uh, they're not uh, reading testimonies. They're not reading the word, and they go sometimes Sunday after Sunday and ask for healing, and uh, no healing occurs. You know, one of the reasons why we attended years ago, uh, First Assembly took a van loan up to a Benny Hinn meeting, and one of the things that you knew about being there was that people who were sick, many people who were sick came with expectation of Amen. being healed. Expectation is the breeding ground of miracles. Yes, if you go to church and you ex uh, you expect it to be the same as church has always been, you're going forward for prayer, but you expect it to be as it's always been, you know, then you're going to get according to your faith. Yes. Your faith is nothing's going to change. Everything's going to be the same. You have to go in faith believing this is the day, right. and this is the time. And I'm telling you that God can use he your can. church. I remember uh, when we were in uh, Full Gospel Church in Nab, Indiana. I think it was called Full Gospel Church of Nab. Uh, we, we had a family there. Actually, I knew them very well because they'd been part of our college fellowship years earlier and had moved to Nab because of our connection to that church. Mm -hmm. And they had a child that had a, like a gorder on its neck. Well... They were definitely faith people, I mean, extreme. Uh, they, you know, I don't even think ever went to a doctor with this uh, gorder, and it just kept growing and growing. Wow. But they did take their child, it was an infant, I mean, it was only a year too old. They took it to a Kenneth Hagen meeting, they took it to a Copeland meeting, they took the baby to a couple other meetings, and all these great faith people, you know, laid hands on that baby, and the gorder just continued to grow. So finally, in desperation, the mother was at uh, at this church made up of farmers, factory workers, you know, just plain old ordinary, ordinary, people. ordinary folks. And the ladies of the church uh, gathered around that young mother and prayed with her for that child. And when the, these simple people with simple faith right. started praying for that baby, that uh, growth began to uh, diminish yes. as they prayed. And by the end of the day, that growth was completely gone. Wow. 
Amen. Now, it Lord wasn't the God. prayers of Kenneth Hagin. It wasn't the prayers of Kenneth Copeland. It wasn't Ordinary the people loving God. Of any other uh, great faith healer, it was the prayers of simple folks and the faith that they had. I love that. that. That's beautiful. Be That's good. So yes. you need to know. You know. You may think, oh, I've got to go to some uh, big name to receive Amen. the healing. No, you need to build your faith. Yes. Uh, you need to trust God to minister to you right there in your local church with your local pastor. Uh, if he's a Bible-believing pastor and prays for the sick and with your fellow congregants who will join their faith with yours mm -hmm. and pray with you about your situation. But it will be done to you according to your faith. So build your faith. Pray, pray if you're spirit filled. Pray in the spirit. Yes. Pray in tongues. Uh, Absolutely. Read the stories of healing in the Bible. Find you some good uh, testimonies of healing online and other places, and God will do it. I'm reminded, and you can find this online. And I believe Georgina, I've, I've played it for you before. There's a recording online of a, a Baptist minister who is teaching a Sunday school class. Now, he had been a well-known preacher. He had been a very well-known preacher. And uh, the preaching and, and some other issues with his voice had uh, damaged his vocal cords so severely that the doctors mm -hmm. said, you'll never preach again. You'll never speak in a normal voice again. He Which could, would be devastating to a yes, preacher. He could only speak in a very... I'll, I'll try to mimic it to some... He could only speak in a very raspy, very uh, almost whispered voice. But what they did was they amplified his voice for this adult Sunday school class. So he's in a passage in Psalms, and this passage begins to talk about healing. And as this man is teaching, he's again teaching in that low whisper voice, raspy voice, and he goes, I believe in this scripture, I believe that God can divinely Amen. heal. He goes on and he says, I know that's not what we believe, but I believe it. And as he confesses his faith Ooh. before this adult Sunday school class, he is healed. It is uh, right there on the recording. That's the power you of God. You can hear him being healed. You can begin to hear people weeping. Uh, you begin to hear people praying. It's a Confession miracle of, faith. of God right there. Let it, let it be done to you according to your faith. Because he believed, he received. So I want to encourage you today. Believe and you will receive. Amen. Build your faith. Uh, you don't need a Branham. It can be your local church. Absolutely. You don't need a big faith healer. It can be your pastor, your uh, friends of the congregation. Who cares for you more? Amen. Uh, some uh, big name that doesn't know you other than one more face in the crowd or your church family that loves you, that worships with you, uh, that prays with you. Trust me, uh, they have an investment in what God does for you. Yes. So I encourage you today, build your faith and believe God for miracles because God is still a miracle yes, working he is. God. Amen. He is. Amen. Well, Georgie, would you like to uh, lead the folks that are watching today in a prayer for healing or uh, the increase of their faith or however God leads you? Amen. Well, I just want to add one thing to that. I, I want to say, like, when he was talking about the local church, we need to renew our commitment to the local church. God has put us each in in the body um, at a designated church somewhere. There's a home for you. There's Amen. a home for your faith to grow and bloom. His wife, whom I love, Pastor uh, Sharon King, always said, you know, bloom where you're planted. God will plant you somewhere, and then he will cause you to grow and your faith to grow. And, you know, we need to renew our commitment to the local church, a local pastor that can shepherd your soul and that can care for you and help build that faith. And, you know, you have questions, they can provide answers. You know, we need to 
stop looking. I know we're in modern technology. I know that we're accustomed to going to Google for everything and, and watching online. And we appreciate you watching online, absolutely. But become part of a body. Somebody's miracle may be counting on whether you show up or not. Amen. I used to do that. I used to encourage myself when I felt like I didn't want to go on a Sunday. Yes, that's possible. We can feel like we don't want to go to church too. And I used to, before I was pastor, and I used to encourage myself and I would be like, you know, some, you have a place in the body of Christ. If you don't show up and allow the Holy Spirit to move through you, something might not happen for the kingdom of God. Am I all power? No. But there's a Holy Ghost inside of me that God wants to use. We all are part of the body. There are fingers and toes and arms and legs and feet. And, you know, we're all members and we all have a part to play. So please think about renewing your commitment to the body of Christ. Being present. There is something to be said about the corporate anointing. Like you said, when those women were gathered together and prayed for that woman who had went everywhere else trying to hunt down a miracle it was the women of the local church that prayed for her and received that healing for that child and so um you know god is good amen he's able to do exceedingly above all we ask or think so if you can just join uh your faith with mine today and pastor kings we can come into agreement we are just going to believe that you can still receive a miracle. And if there's something blocking your faith, something has happened, you've lost trust in God, you've lost faith in God somehow, maybe somebody passed away in your family. Maybe somebody very near and dear to you and you prayed for them and they weren't healed. And now you feel something between you and God that just isn't good. Well, I assure you, it's not God that feels that way towards you. God loves you so much that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and to make sure that you are whole and one day will be present with him. And so just search out your heart. And if there's something you're holding against God, that may be stopping your miracle. You know, a, a reservoir that's stagnant, uh, holding water is doing no good to anybody. That's right doing no good to anybody you need to unplug whatever is causing a stagnant reservoir in your life and allow that water to flow so that life can be formed and life can continue to flourish so we just encourage you today to let go and let god begin to heal you so that you can receive miracle working power in your life i'm going to pray for you today i just feel really led to pray for that for someone that there might be someone out there that's holding something against god it's time to let that go and allow the power of god to come in and restore you and additionally we want to pray for anybody that's believing god for a miracle you need a miracle in your life we're going to agree with you in faith today to receive that so let us go to god in prayer Amen. lord jesus Lord, we just thank you for testimonies like these. God, they encourage our faith. They let us know that God is moving. Yes. Everybody has a place. William Branham had his place. Big faith healers have their place, and I believe in the body today. But God, the local church is so important to you too. And so God, we just pray for everyone uh, under the sound of our voice, God, that if there is something that's clogging up that flow of precious life water to them god we command it to leave in the name of jesus christ we loose you in jesus name by faith just offer that up to him and god's going to take it from you in the name of jesus now if you're believing for a miracle in your life we just want to believe with you so put it out there i want you to speak with your mouth confession confess with your mouth the needs you have and then attach your faith to that need and god will cause you to experience the miracle amen if you need arthritis healed in the name of jesus i want you to speak that out if you have twisted joints in your fingers or in your um your wrist or your elbow you know wherever that is i want you to just try with all your strength to push those forward to straighten them out and then allow god to do the rest in the name of jesus if you have a dis 
dislocated hip. Somebody out there uh, might have a dislocated hip. I want you to believe God for that hip to be put back into position in the name of Jesus. Sciatic nerves. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to sciatic nerves and I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. And I just believe there's somebody out there that has a, had a sciatic nerve problem for 20 years. And I want you to know that God is speaking to you directly. That if you will believe and begin to walk out in faith, just begin to walk across the room before him, that God is going to heal you of that sciatica in the name of Jesus, and it will you'll never have to deal with it again. Just let your faith attach to that in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, we hope that you are believing with us and that you received what God wanted to release to you. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll see you again in... Uh next week in another broadcast uh, mm -hmm. I'm Pastor Carlos King First Assembly of God in Richmond, Indiana uh, our services are 10 o'clock Sunday morning and 6.30 on Sunday night starting the first Sunday of March where as a matter of fact we're beginning with a revival we have some awesome. guests from uh, Missouri coming uh, the Dill Days, they have their own internet program that has been picked up by several national channels so they'll be with us on a Sunday morning, a Sunday night Monday and Tuesday night of the first week of, of March. And our address is 315 National Road West. And Georgine? I am Pastor Georgine Gaddy, and I am with Covenant of Peace Church in Union City, Indiana. Again, we're located at 900 West Hickory Street in Union City. Our service times are 1030 a.m., and that's for regular church service. And uh, we have a Thursday night food and fellowship that starts at 7 p.m., and we're really... Uh, bringing it before God to potentially start a Saturday night service, and that would be at 7 p.m. But um, in order to do that, we'd have to move our regular service on uh, Thursday night over to our home. And, and we're not opposed to doing that. So if you got any feedback and you'd like to see a Saturday night service in the area, let us know. God bless. See you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.